If you're a Detroit Lions fan, you really couldn't be any happier with where the team is at right now. You have to understand that the Lions came into the season as the favorite. Lions would be 7-2 and two right now as the number two seed. They're only a game out of the Eagles, and the Eagles have a brutal schedule upcoming with the Chiefs and the Niners, whereas the Lions have, what, the Bears and the Packers next, and then you've got the Saints and the Broncos. Like, there's some just bad football teams, or at least not necessarily bad football teams, but winnable games coming up for the Lions, and the Eagles Eagles are going to be in for a very, very tough schedule. They still have to play the Cowboys one more time as well. But for Detroit, I still think they have a long ways to go, despite them winning on the road against the Chargers, of course, beating the Raiders. And I'm not even saying the Seahawks or the Ravens games, because those were definitely humbling experiences. But I feel like the Lions, you got to remember, they're just such a young football team. This staff has only been together a couple of years with Brad Holmes. And the Lions, they're only going to get better. And the question for me is going to be Ben Johnson, because is he going to remain with the Lions? He might be the best or at least necessarily, yeah, I don't know, maybe the youngest and the best offensive mind of football. I mean, Sean McVay is still very young. Shane Steichen exists. But Ben Johnson, there's something about this guy. I legitimately had so much fun watching this game. I just got done with it on Tuesday. So, yes, I had to cover 32 teams. So, I, I just got to the Lions. That is the third time in a row I've been interrupted by an ad. Drop a like for me, man. I need premium so I can get rid of these stupid ads so I can talk more Lions footballs with you guys. But... Amon Ross St. Brown, he is just always open, and whenever he catches the ball, you can see that Johnson's scheming it up so that basically whenever he catches it, he's just able to be untouched, and he's able to pick up a lot of yards. He had a 46-yard catch in this. Remember that screen pass that he caught for a touchdown? He walked untouched into the end zone. St. Brown is just so efficient. He's become one of the best receivers in the league in our front of our very eyes. I would say he's probably even a top 10 receiver to this point. He is fantastic. A lot of it is golf in the scheme, but just from a talent perspective, it's hard to name 10 better receivers than St. Brown in this league. And Khalif Raymond had a 41-yard catch, which was able to set up the Lions to get that game-winning field goal. For a second, the Chargers had some momentum. I thought legitimately they could end up winning this game, but then Khalif Raymond said, no, that is not going to happen. Had that monster play, and the Lions were able to march into field goal range. Sam Laporta ended up finishing it off with a catch, which set up the first down. He went four for 40. Jameer Gibbs, three for 35. Brock Wright caught a touchdown. Jamison Williams goes two for 18. Nearly had a rushing touchdown, but Taylor Decker ended up having a penalty, which would bring it back, which was unfortunate because Jamison Williams, if you guys play Madden and you hold down square diving to the end zone, he had this like signature Madden dive and it was a nice celebration. But for those of you that don't know, I'm a huge Jamison Williams fan. Um, I only have one NFL jersey and I went to get a Jamison Williams jersey. This was last season. They were sold out. So I went with DeAndre Swift over Aiden Hutchinson, which would not be a smart decision, obviously, but that's just how much I like James Williams because the first NFL jersey I ever bought with my own money happened was going supposed to be him, but they were they were out of stock as he was a rookie at the time and there was a lot of hype. But I'm kind of rambling. Let's uh, get back on topic here and talk about this Lions rushing game. So they go 31 for 200. David Montgomery had 12 carries for 116 yards and a touchdown on that 75 yard run. Jameer Gibbs, 14 for 77. He actually out. So, uh, I don't know if he outsnapped Montgomery from the eye test. I'm gonna say that he did. It definitely, you now he had to have. From someone who watched the game, Gibbs was on the field more of 100% than Montgomery, and it makes sense because Montgomery is just a much like significantly better Jamal Williams. And I trust me, I love Jamal Williams. But he just doesn't have the elusiveness and ability as a David Montgomery. So that's a huge upgrade there. But Jameer Gibbs is essentially DeAndre Swift healthy, but even better. And that's high praise because when Swift was on the field, he was nearly unstoppable with the Lions. But Jameer Gibbs, the burst that he has, the hands, he is just an unbelievable football player. I think you can legit make a case that he's a top five player in all of the draft as a running back because he's not just a running back. He's also used as a receiver. You know, we saw him a lot in third down and Goff was able to throw the ball to him. And there's still a lot of work to be done. But considering that Gibbs wasn't even really playing the beginning of the season, and now he's starting to get a lot of work, that's only going to make the Lions better. And I am definitely ecstatic to see what Gibbs is able to do the rest of the season, especially the rest of his career. It's going to be awesome. And one good thing for the Lions is that they did not turn the ball over. Uh, well, at least they didn't turn it over with a fumble or a pick. They did turn the ball over on downs, of course, um, in the red zone. But yeah, no fumbles, no interceptions. Derek Goff, 23 of 33 for 333 yards and two touchdowns. That's how you know Goff is throwing the ball 
well, down the field, but also a lot of after the catch for Goff. I mean, 23 um, completions for 333 is, is a lot. That's a lot of yards, man. I mean, Justin Herbert had 27 completions for 323 yards, four touchdowns, an interception. And I do want to talk about the Chargers. Lions fans are going to have to let me know their thoughts on me talking about the other team during these games because I thought the Chargers played a hell of a game offensively. I legitimately thought they were going to win this game at the end, but then, like I said, Khalif Raymond had that incredible... Well, really, it was Ben Johnson. He actually made it look like a run to the right. Khalif Raymond's running across the field, catches it, and we know what he brings with his speed. I mean, he is a fantastic special teams player. I want to say he had, what, 600, 700 receiving yards last season as well. He's actually a very underrated player. doesn't get talked about enough. But from the Chargers' perspective, they feel like they definitely let this game get away from them. I mean, Herbert was fantastic. Austin Eckler, 19 for 67 with a touchdown. They really got him going. 4 for 48 receiving. I mean, Eckler, not that he killed the Lions by any means, but the, they were the Chargers were really looking to get him the football. And we know what he's able to do when the ball's in his hands. Keenan Allen, though, was the story of this game. 11 for 175 and two touchdowns a lot of these throws were though justin herbert making an unbelievable play there's probably one or two quarterbacks outside of herbert that were able to make some of these throws you could probably argue maybe even just mahomes or i guess josh allen can make them but i mean there were some throws that herbert made like that touchdown to keen allen uh, well the first one where uh, he was working on i want to say jerry jacobs and jacobs actually had good coverage on it but first of all the throw was just ridiculous and then keen allen made a terrific catch I mean, wow. I mean, Keenan Allen just was all over the field in this game, 175. Uh, thankfully, the Lions offense was able to respond basically every single time because, I mean, when you give up 38 points in the NFL, you probably should not win that game. But the Lions just have so much firepower that they were able to make the most of it. And, of course, that interception was by, I don't have it pulled up, but it was by G uh, Kirby Joseph who made this toe-tapping play. But Alex Anzalone had the pressure on that. And that's what it comes down to is teamwork. When you put pressure on a quarterback, Back, you're gonna force him into some bad throws or at least difficult throws and as good as Justin Herbert is I mean he still will throw a pick on that and it was a good play by Joseph so of course last season I mean the rookie what third rounder had an unbelievable season uh, filling in for um, an injury and he was just uh, fantastic. I mean, the Lions' depth has been standing out this season for sure. And, uh, I mean, defensively for the Lions, uh, they, they sort of they, – I didn't think they looked good, like I said. I mean, Aaron Glenn, I think a lot of it was just on the scheme. It wasn't like lack of effort or anything. They were playing hard, and they did have some tight coverage. But this the uh, it really what it comes down to is Justin Herbert. I mean, when you're going up against a Herbert or a Burrow – or a Mahomes, yeah, even a Lamar Jackson, I'll throw into that uh, sentence. It, it's just, it's so difficult to stop them. And it wasn't even the run game for the Chargers. You know, 28 for 98 certainly isn't gonna kill you. Like you'll, you'll live with that pretty much uh, any single day of the week. But it's just Herbert was making some unbelievable plays and the Lions were getting pressure too. Like from, from the eye test, the Lions were getting pressure in this game. It's just that Herbert was able to escape it and get out of the pocket or he was able to step up and make throws. And Quinton Johnston, Keen Allen, Austin Eckler, Jalen Guyton caught his first touchdown in two years, four for 41. I thought Donald Parham Jr. looked very solid, only had two catches, but I mean, he was getting open. Um, Darius Davis, the rookie at a TCU for the Chargers, uh, didn't really do too much in this game, but we know what he brings with his speed. Johnson versus Kellen Moore, and I can't even, uh, Brandon Staley is the head coach for the Chargers. I have no idea who their defensive coordinator is, I'm going to be honest, but uh, it's just they're not getting it done. It's as simple as that, right? Like if Ben Johnson became the head coach of the Chargers, I think we'd be talking about them winning a Super Bowl. I, I seriously do.